Hi everyone, in this video we're going to be talking about foreign keys. So in the last video we talked about primary keys and how they're used to uniquely identify records in a single table. Sometimes you want to also establish links between records in two different tables or three different tables and you want to make sure that there is integrity between these links. So rather than me going through the theoretical explanation of why foreign keys are important, let's just look through an example and see what can go wrong if we don't establish proper foreign key relationships. Depending on your SQL environment, foreign keys may or may not be natively turned on or off. So for me, I have to turn foreign keys on in the SQLite 3 environment in Python by doing con.execute, pragma foreign keys equals on. So that just enables foreign keys for me. Now, the next thing I'm going to do, I'm assuming I have no tables in my database. So I'm going to go ahead and just create my students table with a primary key on the name of the student. So I'm going to do that. I'll insert a couple of records into the students table, and this is what I get. So I have just three students. They have some various information about them. Now here's the new part. I'm going to create a new table called enrollment. So enrollment will just have two columns. The first one is course name, and the second is student name. So this basically just gives information about which course each student is taking. So let me create the table, insert a couple records, and look at how it looks like. So this is our very simple enrollment table. Notice we have Yoda, Kylo, and Vader, who are all also in the students table. And we have some different courses that they happen to be taking. So Yoda and Kylo are taking thermodynamics together, and Vader is taking calculus. Now, everything looks fine for now, because all the students I have in my enrolled table are also existing in my uh, students table. So everything seems okay. But what happens when I try some things that shouldn't be allowed? Here's the first thing that should not be allowed. So here, what I try to do is insert another record into the enrolled table where Ray, a student called Ray, is taking calculus. Now, this should not be allowed because Ray does not appear in my student's table. So this is kind of like a ghost. We don't have any record of the student in my main student's table, which is supposed to keep track of every student at the university. Yet the student somehow shows up in my enrollment data. So since we don't have any checks for this, it's just going to allow that to pass. Now here's a second thing that shouldn't be allowed. Let's say that student Kylo graduates from the university. So um, for some reason, here's Kylo. They leave or graduate from the university. So I'm deleting this record from the students table. That should be fine in itself. But let's see what it happened. But let's see what effect it has on the enrolled table. Since there's no link between these two tables, this record of Kylo, who's taking thermodynamics, will still exist in my enrolled data. So sometimes people call this an orphan where you delete something from the main or parent table, and then in the secondary or child table, which is enrollment in our case, that record still exists. So now what it seems like is there's no student called Kylo anywhere at the university, yet in our enrollment data, there's still a record of some student named Kylo taking a course. So we also don't want to leave the database in that state. And if I did that, it would be fine right now because I don't have any checks or balances against it. And if I look at what these two tables look like, they seem very, very out of shape. So in my students data, I just have two students, Yoda and Vader. Yet in my enrollment data, I have two other ghost students who shouldn't really exist. So I don't want to leave the database in this state. So I'm going to go back up to the top. And we're going to add just one line, which is going to fix all of this for us. The first thing I'll do is drop both of these tables so we can start from scratch. So they're gone. The students table will not change. I'm going to leave that as it is. And then we'll have the same three students we had before. The new part is going to be in the enrollment table. So what I'll do here is I'll add this line which says I'm going to establish a foreign key and the foreign key has to be one of the columns that are in your table. So for us it's the student name. So I'm going to establish a foreign key on student name and this student name that's in enrollment data is going to be referencing a different column in a different table. It's going to be referencing the name column in the students table. So when I first learned this, it was a little bit confusing because there's a lot of things going on in this statement. But in pure English, what it's saying is that I have some column in my enrollment data, which is student name. And that student name should be the same kind of data. It should be the same. It should reflect the same information as the name column in my students table. Now, behind the scenes, what this is doing is it's kind of enforcing that anytime you see a student name in the enrollment table, that student name has to exist in the student data. What it means is that I can only enroll a student in a course if that student exists at my university. 
The other part it takes care of is that if I try to delete something from my students table, let's say I try to delete Kylo again, it'll be fine to do that as long as Kylo doesn't appear anywhere in my enrollment data. What that means in pure English is that you cannot uh, drop a student from the university or remove a student from the university if that student is still enrolled in some courses. So let's see if it had our desired effect. So I'm going to create the table in this way, I'm going to execute the same lines. And these all inserted fine because Yoda, Kylo, and Vader were all students who were already in my students table. So I didn't break any relationships there. Now here's what should fail, right? If I try to insert student Ray into my enrollment data, that should fail because student Ray does not exist in my students table. Let's see if that's true. Indeed, I get an integrity error, foreign key constraint fail. That's what I wanted. The other thing that should fail is if I try to delete student Kylo from my students data, that should fail because Kylo is currently enrolled in a course. So that would break that relationship as well. So I don't even want to allow this statement. So of course, I also get foreign key constraint failed. So in both these cases, my foreign key now takes care of uh, not leaving the database in an incorrect state. Well, the question is now, the question is now, how do I actually get these statements to work? How do I insert a student called Ray? And how do I delete student Kylo? Well, we have to do other actions to make all this consistent. So again, if we look at what the student data and enrollment data looks like, it looks the same. Nothing got changed. So if we really want to add a row in the enrollment table for Ray taking calculus, we first have to state that there is a student called Ray. So the first thing we'll do is insert a record for student Ray into the students table, thereby giving the existence of the student. And then we can put a row for Ray taking calculus in the enrollment table. So these two together will leave the database in a consistent state and therefore they're allowed. The other thing I wanted to do was delete Kylo from the students table. Well, I can do that as long as Kylo doesn't appear anywhere in the enrollments table. So the first thing I have to do is delete every record in enrollment where student name is Kylo so that Kylo doesn't show up in the enrollments table anymore. And then I'm clear to delete Kylo from the students table. So these two statements together leave the database in a consistent state. Now let's look at our two tables finally. And we see that in our first table, we have Yoda, Vader, and Ray. Kylo was deleted. And in the second table, we have Yoda, Vader, and Ray as well. So everything that's student name in our enrollments is also a student name in our students. So that's consistent. And there's no Kylo in the first table. And that's fine because there's no Kylo in the second table. So hopefully this helps to see how foreign keys can maintain certain relationships between two or three or however many tables you have so that the database always remains in a consistent state. And you as the database administrator don't have to take care of that explicitly, which could be quite a nightmare if you have many, many rows. All right, so until next time.